Hey guys, it's Matt. Welcome to Speed Tutor, and welcome to the future of Unity. Whether this is Unity 7 or not, who knows? But I don't want you clicking away from this until you've watched this entire video. I'm going to give you a quick run through of what's coming up in Unity 6, everything that's coming up in 6.1, and then what's coming up in the future for the amazing optimizations, tools, and the things that we've been desperate for for the last decade, and especially my favorite the new world building tools. I will put annotations in the timeline so you can skip to each part if you want to see them. So stick around, lay back and let's run through it. So a quick recap and you can check out my previous video on the keynote and it's everything about Unity 6. But a quick look at Unity 6, it does arrive on October the 17th along with the Fantasy Kingdom, the Time Ghost demo and stuff that you can check out in engine for you to mess around with. You can get hold of their graphics and rendering optimization features like GPU resident draw, GPU occlusion culling, and adaptive pro volumes, improvements to lighting workflows, brand new improvements to multiplayer and multiplayer play mode so you can easily test, brand new Muse chat integration when you can actually have that which is context aware to your project so you can ask it to do things, new updates to mobile web run times and I'll put the link down below so you can check that out. So Unity will be releasing Unity 6.1 and it's going to have a generational release model and from their conference they said that it will be similar to Unity's LTS which is long term support how it previously was. But now they'll be moving to much longer two year generations so they'll have a longer time to increase stability of the engine and they will be integrating fast frequent patches and these will be smaller patches which will fix bugs and other things that really need to be fixed. And then they will have things called update releases which are similar to patches but they're larger updates which may have more features and more things integrated. So they will have patches every one to four weeks to be able to quickly get things fixed for what the community are really asking for. Then they will have update releases which will work as I said like a patch but will have a stabilization period so it will almost incorporate all these patches together to be one big update. So Unity 6.1 will be in beta in January and then ship April 2025. Some of the biggest things that are coming in 6.1 is something called Mesh LOD and this will help you automatically generate level of details for meshes that you have at runtime and it can work in static or skin meshes. So in this scene here they take a scene which is 81 million triangles and then they drop that down to 4.5 million triangles with the automatic LOD and you don't have a massive drop in the resolution that you have. They will have deferred rendering plus, they'll have cluster based light culling which will improve GPU performance, they'll have improvements to the GPU render draw and they will have highly requested features like on tile deferred rendering for URP for tile based technology to be able to create an update performance. For platform specific, they will have brand new platform browser with new profiles. They'll have added things like sub profiles and recommended packages. So you can more easily extend your stuff to large screens, foldables and XR support. So you'll be able to get started in XR much more quickly to be able to have a setup scene and jump straight into it. They'll have brand new multiplayer templates, new templates for MetaQuest to be able to configure and build much faster. They will have full release for web GPU or have a faster and more efficient GPU rendering for web based applications. They'll have brand new support for instant games for Facebook and Messenger, WebAssembly Stripper, C Sharp Instant Games SDK. Multiplayer will have the multiplayer play mode which will be available on mobile like the inclusion of the widgets like I mentioned in the keynote. Host migration support with netcode for entities so other clients can always take over if the host does leave. There'll be session management user experiences to be able to manage the game state. But now on to the next generation. Could it be Unity 7 or could it be further? But let me know down below what you think about some of these updates. So Unity will start deprecating some features. They want to get rid of Unity GUI, probably the old input system. They're going to be deprecating things little by little so they'll have a new approach to deprecating assets. So what they plan to do is mark a feature for deprecation in any current generation. So let's say in this generation in Unity 6 they were going to mark Unity's GUI in for deprecation. It would only be deprecated in Unity 7 and it would be either removed or limited in some way. So you don't have to worry about something that you at least have one generation of Unity before 
they removed this tool and added in their new fresh tool. So in regards to things that are going to happen, the biggest, massive and most amazing thing, they're finally going to simplify rendering because they know that over 90% of games that are released on Steam were made in a script or a render pipeline, i.e. URP and HDRP. So they're going to get rid of the built-in render pipeline in the next generation, so in Unity 7, and they're going to create a unified renderer. So which will be URP and HDRP together merged and then you will be able to get all of the tooling that you use in either of these two at the same time. In HDRP it uses physical light units or in URP it uses luminance and you'll be able to choose one of these depending on which you like the most. URP will have an inclusion of render graph and you will have a brand new PBR lit shader which will be based on the standardized open PBR PBR style shading units and you will have one shader which can pretty much do it all across high end and really low end style shading needs and there'll be a simple drop down box to be able to change between render loops if you want a lower type of hardware or a higher type of hardware like you would have seen in URP and HDRP. There will be an inclusion of shader graph 2 with block shaders which will have brand new and node based tools a new graph api 20 new nodes with expanded functionality and then you can create your own nodes specifically with block shading brand new node selectors with user experience features and everything that you need whether you want to use the graph itself or write your own code they did make a big talk about iteration time and progress of bars and unity know this is the one thing that people hate, whether it's compiling script, whether it's importing assets, whether it's opening your projects. Now, this is something that they're dedicated to doing and they're re-architecturing the entirety of Unity, moving all mono style stuff to core CLR. So you'll have the latest .NET technology and they will keep on updating it. So you always stay up to date. You always get improved editor performance. You get improved code performance at runtime and they're gonna move away from domain reload which means that everything that gets reloaded at the same time when you want to recompile and only code that will change will move and I did feature a free asset that does this and there's one popular also one on the Unity Asset Store that does this too and there'll be brand new capabilities for coding practices, performance for garbage collection and an integration for MS Build which is an industry standard build integration with brand new debugging tools. And then talking about import times, there'll be a new content pipeline this will change how and what content is imported at what time because usually when you have a prefab if you've got various branches of a prefab if you change one element of this prefab it would resave the entire prefab together but they're going to change it that only the item that you change in this context was a leaf it will only change that item within the prefab and it won't have to resave the entire prefab and so when it comes to importing assets, they're going to make sure that it progressively imports in the background so it will prioritize the things that you use in your scene or the things that you'll see first and the things will be imported in the background just so that you're not waiting for every single thing if you've got a really big project. Then when it comes to things regarding power and performance that you can see in the editor, Unity wants to make ECS a massive part of Unity in the ecosystem, whether that's ECS and DOTS, and they want to give this to a wider audience. You can use this in its own functionality or you will be able to take advantage of the performance even if you use game object based architecture. So you will be able to use entities and game objects interchangeably because as you see in the background, with the way that memory is split up when you use game objects, it's all randomly placed and it's not very optimized. With entities, everything is laid out side by side so it makes it far more optimized and you'll be able to get far more performance. They're going to bring in unified transforms between game objects and entities so you'll be able to have mixed hierarchies and even game objects that are parents of entities or entities that are parents of game objects and it just makes so much more flexibility as long as this system actually works properly. They are adhering to a brand new animation system so you'll be able to preview animations without actually having to load them in which will be a massive thing to be able to do. There'll be brand new skeleton workflows to add, edit, reset and disable bones on the fly. Brand new socket objects for being able to place objects like weapons and things like that. You'll be able to create and edit animation events with a new markup and system. And there'll be a new remapping system be able to remap rigs and things to other characters. No matter the scale, the naming convention or anything, you won't be restricted at all. I'm not sure how it's going to work, but they claim that this is going to be a thing. A new state machine which will be much easier to use and manage and <laughs> less spaghetti when it comes to 
managing big state machines for your animations. There'll be a live visual debugging, so you'll be able to see what's going on at any moment when you need to check what's this animation doing now, and it'll all be built on the top of ECS, so it'll be the fastest performance they can have. One of my most favourite things and the most sought after thing for me is their world building tools that they're going to add because the terrain system has been one of the worst systems that's been around since I started using Unity in Unity 4. Not just programmers, designers, but everybody that will have a brand new non-destructive workflow so you'll be able to create masks, have procedural rule sets based on altitude, based on slopes and parameters so you'll be able to texture and do things really easily. And if you change things like, say, duplicating part of an island and then dragging it around, it will morph around the content that you've already got there. Even if you want to do blending, you'll be able to use Shader Graph to be able to blend parts of other objects. So you can take this rock example and blend it into the bottom. You'll be able to integrate hero assets, so when you have replaced that and you move it around your environment, it will morph around this and change the texturing and the layout for you so it always fits in, similar to what you'd use in Microverse, where a lot of those tools are in there, but it will be in engine. There'll be things like virtual texturing and tessellation, so the further you move away from the camera, it'll improve performance, thus allowing you to again improve performance and it will all be built on entities and ECS. And they did make a point that it's not just for PC and console, it'll be for mobile and XR and every platform you want to reach, all these tools will be able to make it even better. So I do hope that you like the sound of these improvements. Do let me know what you think below and what features you're liking the most. Do be sure to check out all the links in the description for all the best sales, savings and everything you can find in Unity. Come and check out my Patreon too to get over 225 different scripts, assets and projects you cannot find anywhere else. And a big thank you to all my patrons, special thank you to Peter Steiner, Vera Shutha and Jennifer for their amazing support. And thank you to everybody else who comes to watch the video. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.